everybody all over the world uh, can be thankful to this gentleman for our hobby and for their careers. Millions of people are employed thanks to Dr. Larry Weber, who is considered uh, by everybody to be uh, the creator of modern television as we see it today, particularly with plasma technology. And uh, I, I asked Dr. Weber to join us today, and it was such a long shot, I never thought he would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> But he's here with us now, and I thought we'd move along quickly today and bring Dr. Weber up for a brief presentation that he's going to do for us today. Okay. Dr. Larry Weber. Well, uh, I've been doing this now for 43 years, working on plasma TVs, and, and uh, let me tell you how excited I am to be here because uh, I don't get an opportunity to see what you are seeing in front of me. I, I've never had this opportunity. I've, I've seen, let me say, to, to compare displays, you really have to forget the spec sheet and put the display right next to one of the others and look at it and put all sorts of different patterns on it and then you can decide. That's the only way to do it. I've seen that done before. But always in some company, you know, company A panels here and company B panels B here. And of course, the engineers work very hard. If you work for company A, you're going to sort of detune company B <laughs> <laughs> and bring the customers in and say, "Look how good yours is." So here you have the six best panels right now that anybody's ever seen. We've got three plasmas on the top, the best. We've got three liquid crystals on the bottom, the best. And we've got a team of experts, which is unbiased, that has spent quite a bit of time, probably in the last few days, several days, <laughs> yeah, many tuning hours. this stuff. And so here it is, okay? And uh, it, this is a real opportunity. I haven't seen it either, and I've been before, and I've been looking at all these things and, and enjoyed just just coming here. So if we can have the first slide, is there a? Is yeah, you just say when you want to change okay, slides. Yeah, you just say slide. change slides. Okay, good. Uh, let me. This was. Uh, back in the 60s, I was an undergraduate at the University of Illinois, and this was what I saw, okay? This was the first plasma panel with more than one pixel. I wasn't very impressed. <laughs> this is only like one inch by one inch. Yes, there are four, I mean, 16 addressable pixels in this panel. But this looked like some professor's pet project that wasn't going to go anywhere. <laughs> and so I wasn't so excited about it. But then I met the professors. And uh, they were wonderful people. And they were the true inventors of this. And so I've seen this go from this level to what you see in front of you today. And it's been an exciting trip. Now, what I've invented is, is many of the, the later things. And if we can have the next slide. Uh, this is uh, one of my first inventions of significance, which was the energy recovery circuit, which cuts the power in these plasma panels by a large measure, you know, maybe a half or something like that. Well, you can't make a very good slide out of, of a, a circuit, okay? So, so this was the panel that we had, and we called this the bouncing ball. There was a wonderful graphic that would rotate, and this was 1986. Uh, a wonderful graphic, and, and I love this guy's eyes, because it's... <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with this picture, you know? You know, look, at, you're, you're seeing the image on this side of the panel. So I used to have great fun with the liquid crystal crowd, you know, because liquid crystal and plasma, they're, they're still competing. You know, they were competing back then. And the plasma always claimed wider viewing angle. And so I would take this panel, hold it in my hand like I did, just like this, and I would tell the liquid crystal, I said, you'll never beat this. <laughs> this, this panel, and I rotated it I said, this panel has a 360 degree viewing. <laughs> and it looks like they haven't beat it yet. <laughs> Anyhow, these, these were the monochrome days, okay, when all we had was, was these orange and, and black. Uh, but we had a lot of fun with this, and it turns out this circuit is now used in all the plasma panels today, so it, it's very important. Now, of course, color was sort of the next thing, and if I have the next slide, uh, this was 94, so we skipped quite a few years. Um, we started a company about 40 miles north of here in Highland, New York, called Plasmaco, and uh, we developed a lot of technology. And this is one of the, the key things that we developed, was the method for getting high contrast ratio. 
So this was the first. You remember this panel, Jim? Oh yeah. He did the digital design. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, there was a lot of digital magic, and uh, we spent a lot of sleepless nights over that, <laughs> that panel. But, uh, uh, this was uh, uh, this was the highest contrast ratio anybody had at the time. Uh, liquid crystals, of course, couldn't do anything like this. The plasmas, the best they had was about 60 to one. This one was 400 to one. So this was a big step. And it was such a high step that uh, Panasonic uh, decided they really liked this technology, and so they bought the company. Uh, and so in 96, we became a, a Panasonic company. Uh, now, go to the next slide. Uh, one of the things we had was that the Panasonic money, um, <laughs> <laughs> and little companies don't have much money if you've ever had one. It's, it's always a struggle. Is we could do some big things. And in 1999, this little, in fact, it was a little apple juice factory that we put all this uh, old IBM equipment in. We, we made this 60-inch uh, diagonal panel. And it really did look as good as, as this picture. Uh, this opened everybody's eyes. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Bill Schindler, who's a guy that I think is sometimes, uh, he wished he could be here, but he had some other business. Uh, Bill was the project manager on this one. And uh, what this did, was it sort of taught people that you needed a big display, okay? The, our Japanese partners uh, looked at it and said, six inches, that's too big. And that was the exact reaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, again, uh, some didn't quite work out right. <laughs> but, but what this showed people was that you needed a big display to see high definition television. And the reason was is that your eye is the limiting factor. Uh, HDTV was designed to work on 37-inch CRTs. In, in the U.S., people sit about 10 feet, you know, about yeah. the center of the audience, away from the display, and you can't see a full high-resolution signal uh, and see, you know, get it into your eye if you just have a 37-inch. You need something big. So I think these big displays will be with us for a long time, and they'll, they'll be getting a little bigger. Although how big it can fit in a room, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. put six of them on one wall. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll just fill the whole wall. Yeah. You have yeah. to get a bigger store. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyhow, that, that tells you a little bit of my history so you know who I am. Uh, what Robert asked me to talk about in, in, is the sort of the differences between liquid crystal and plasma. So we've got the, the, the excellent examples. Let's just talk about that a little bit. Next slide. Um, on the left is the plasma, on the right is the LCD. And, and some of you probably know some of this stuff, but I, I want to give you a little different perspective. I mean, so a plasma has this ultraviolet light that comes from a gas discharge, just like a fluorescent lamp, and it hits the phosphors, and depending on whether you have red, green, or blue phosphors, you get your colors. Whereas a liquid crystal has some sort of backlight, either a, a fluorescent lamp or an LED in the, in the case of these three panels, uh, and then there's a shutter that can open and close, and then it lets light through. You know, it's white light initially, but then it, it has the color filters and it lets it out. So those are the basic technologies. It's amazing that these displays look so similar, you know, on the top row and the bottom row, even though the technologies are really different, okay? A really big difference. A plasma display, most of the real <coughs> tricks have to be done in the pixel, okay? So a plasma display, I think of it as a device. Whereas a liquid crystal display, yeah, I think of as a system, okay? They have, you know, these things that open and close, and they have something that does the color, and they've got the backlight, and they, there's a whole bunch of other things that they put in a liquid crystal as a complete system. And as a complete system, it gives you these, these excellent images that we see. So the plasma engineer has to struggle with the, uh, with the pixel and change the pixel. Whereas the LCD has got all sorts of, it's sort of, uh, they, they've got a lot of flexibility to do a lot of things. Um, but the plasma, for instance, has its one color. You know, colors are determined by the phosphors. Once you do that, it's pretty hard to mess up the colors if you've done your electronics properly. Whereas liquid crystal, it's a, it's a lot harder, as we'll see. So let's go to the next slide. One of the things people don't realize about liquid crystals is that the generally realizes that the backlight has to be really bright. 
this is uh, gives an analysis where you, you start with a backlight and you lose 60% of your light there and then you lose 40% in a polarized, you lose 95% in the liquid crystal, 30% in the filters and so on. You multiply all this together and you come out with 4% comes out the front Whoa. compared to what you started with in the back. Okay. Now, these numbers vary. This was done by some analysis, uh, uh, not me, somebody else in, in 05. And, but typically, a good round number to remember is only 5% of the light that goes in the back comes out the front. And that's when the thing's full on. Okay. So that's when it's as bright as it can be. You, you get this kind of thing. So what that means is you really have to have a bright backlight. If we, if we turned to put a white screen on here and all the LEDs were on, uh, and you, you took the display apart, the LCD off, it would blind you on this, you know, it'd be so bright. Um, so, that's, that's, that can be done, but what you have to realize is it's, you have to get rid of that light when you want the thing to be black. So it's a really big challenge to turn the display off when you've got something that's that bright and, and get it really low, okay? And, and so that's one of the problems that the, uh, the bullet crystal has. If we get the next slide. Um, this is one way, the edge backlight LCD, where we've got a, a, a black, you know, a, a backlight lamp or could be LEDs. And, and so this, this panel here and this panel here are both these edge lit uh, LCDs. Uh, so the, the LEDs are along the edge or along the top. I don't know where they are in this particular panel. They're on the edge on, the, on this one here. They're on the edge yeah. on this one here. Okay. And not on the top. No, that right? and right. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you can you can actually see them on the edge. Okay, if you put a black screen, maybe you'll see some images. But these are things you can be thinking about when you look at these displays. Uh, look at what has to happen though. If if the if the white LEDs are along here, how do you get the light out of here? You know, it's got to it's got to snake its way along this. And what's miraculous is is that the uniformity is, is pretty good. Okay, in other words, there's some really good engineering here that's, that's taken the light from here and gets it all the way to here, and uh, it still looks very uniform. But you can see also that there's a number of other films in here. There's diffusers, there's brightness enhancement films, there's, uh, uh, you know, there's other films and there's compensator films that aren't shown in here. And so the challenge, the big challenge the LCD has, and this is one of the big differences between the plasma and the LCD, is when you get off axis here, you know, these liquid crystals have molecules that are oriented a certain way, and these, these diffusers and, and brightness enhancement films, and they, they also are directional. So if you've got this really bright backlight that will almost blind you, when you look over here, as opposed to over here on this display, you're going to see a big difference. Your colors are going to shift, and, and, and you're going to see, uh, uh, you may see, uh, brighter, when it's really dark, it isn't going to be dark. And so those are, those are sort of different. In the plasma, you can't do any of that, okay? You've got these individual pixels, so it's, it's really hard to change the color in them, okay? It's really hard to, uh, to change. If they're, if they're off, then they're going to be off, and they're going to be dark. So the, the LCD is this wonderful system, and it's, it's done miraculous things. Uh, but it's, it's got challenges, and so these are the limitations in, in some of these technologies. So let's go on to the next slide. This is the, uh, uh, the one where you put the LEDs on the, the back, of the, the, in other words, the whole area. This one is representative of that. Uh, yeah, this is direct array. Right, and so there's a, an array of, I don't know, 400 or so LEDs on in here. And uh, so each one of these LEDs, uh, in fact, th this one I think uses white LEDs. Most companies use white LEDs. This was a slide made by an LED manufacturer. And so they want to sell more LEDs. They want to sell you a green, red, and blue one. <laughs> Four times as many LEDs. Okay, so that's why they use that. I think some panels have been, some products have used this technology, but I don't, I'm not Sony, aware. Sony oh. had an RGB uh, LED product okay. several years ago. We had one of eight. Sorry if I want to blow them. Is it still, are there any of them? Not making any more. Yeah, okay. So it just costs more, and so you yeah. know, you, they, they already cost uh, more than you want to have them cost. You always want the cost down, so they, they get rid of that. But anyhow, this particular technology is wonderful because uh, you can you can adjust these, this array of LEDs better and get actually better darks and lower power compensation uh, than you can with, with one which has the edge of it. So that's why people like those, and, and this is an excellent representative of that, that case. 
Uh, show the next slide. Uh, this is this is where you, you have to think about this kind of an image. Um, and uh, here is the brightest spot. Now, if this was an array of just say cold fluorescent lamps that uh, uh, had uh, nothing, uh, no modulation, you'd have to have the lamp on full bright uh, to handle this bright pixels in this area, even though most of this scene is sort of dark. Um, on the other hand, if you have one of these, you, you've got to put these, these edges here. In fact, I can see, now I can tell, absolutely. That, in fact, all the people over here looking this way or the people over looking this way can see those this edge. Lit. I can see it very easily right here uh, that the light's all coming from this edge. And uh, so, in fact, it looks like they've got that whole edge on. So even though it's, it's, there's not, they've got these bright pixels here, which, which they have to turn the whole thing on. So they don't get the advantage of doing that. Whereas this panel can, uh, you know, turn only the ones really bright in that area there, and that's, that's sort of nice. But there probably will be, it'll be a challenge. Think about this. You've got to turn all these LEDs on. You, you've got to, if one needs to be bright and the one next to it needs to be dark, uh, it's hard to, uh, to modulate the pixels and, and uh, uh, multiply that by the effect of the scattering of the different LEDs and the crosstalks. And, and so it's, it's a major engineering challenge to get that, uh, uh, that to work. So anyhow, uh, I think I've probably uh, talked enough here. And uh, next slide, I want to thank Robert okay, for this uh, <laughs> wonderful display of what you've done here. It's, uh, it's, it's really something that's a treat for me to be here and see all this. So, thank you thank very you much.